Hey, what's up guys? I got a pretty straightforward video going on today. We're gonna to install SCSI in the Sonic TS-12. All right, I flipped this thing around here. SCSI is an interface that would be right here if you ordered this board with this option, or it would be right here if you purchased this board with this option. Back in the day, SCSI was a real fast way to transfer data. It was way ahead of its time, and the purpose of having this in these keyboards is so you can load stuff off of a CD-ROM, or they had SCSI hard drives, and it was way faster than the floppies and stuff. It was very beneficial at the time to have this interface because you could just load sounds real fast and it was pretty cool <laughs> So here's the board. This is called a SP4, and this is the board that would be mounted in here. These are pretty hard to find. I got this one out of Australia. There was only a couple for sale. There was one in Arizona, and the dude wanted like 150 or something, but the one in Australia was 100 bucks. So I was like, the heck with it. I'm not in any hurry. <laughs> it took this thing like almost two months to get here, which kind of sucks. So this will mount in here, and then this will plug into the board. Now I did a modification to this thing, these in Sonics, they will not power the SCSI interface. So if you plug anything into this, any drive or anything that doesn't power itself from an external source, this won't power it. The Kurzweil's will. What I did to change that is I got something called a shot key diode. I think that's how you say it. It'll let electricity go through one way, but it won't let it come back the other. This dot right here on this side, that is a five volt source. And on the SCSI platform, the five volts that would power everything, would be on pin 25. I believe that's pin 25 right there. So we got the shot key diode coming off of the 5 volt and powering it pin 25. So like a Kurzweil, this in Sonic should power stuff. I have a little SCSI to SD that I'm going to plug into this, and that means I won't have to run power to it. It'll just power itself. Yeah. This thing soldered in there fairly well, but I'm going to put a little piece of tape over that lug right there, and then maybe put a tiny piece of tape over the diode itself. That's pretty close tolerance there. If that thing was to break loose, I'm sure to short out on that lug. Well, let me run and put the tape on there. I'll be right back. Yeah, so here we are. Got a piece of tape over this ground lug right here. And I put a real thin piece of tape over this diode just to help support it. So maybe it won't get knocked loose. <laughs> Someone recommended I use hot glue for this, but I didn't want to go buy a hot glue gun. And when you buy the glue, it's got to be in a big pack of glue sticks. And some of the cheap guns, the reviews say they work maybe once and then the trigger breaks. I'm just going to use tape. I'm not going to put a dot of hot glue on there. But just to clarify, the reason you want the shot key diode here and you wouldn't just want to jump this. If you have something that powers the SCSI chain plugged in with this, you're going to get five volts coming this way also. Like say for some crazy reason you had this in the same chain as a Kurzweil, the Kurzweil is putting five volts to the SCSI chain. The shot key diode here, it keeps any kind of chain voltages from running back up into this card and damaging the card. This card's power can go out, nothing can come back in. And just to show you real quick, these are the diodes I got. I don't know if that number means anything. 1N5819. They're straight like this, and you have to bend them. There's other points and stuff on that board. You don't want to be shorting out with this diode. So it was kind of nerve-wracking bending this thing where it would fit right in there. There's several places where you just have, like, maybe a millimeter clearance. I almost just said the heck with it and sold the SCSI to SD and the card. But I was sitting there with the gun, just pretending. I was like, man, let me just keep trying it. It's hard for me to quit. I can get fed up with stuff, but... I don't throw in the towel usually. <laughs> Subscribers, I hate that you've seen this a million times, but I just, I have to say it for people watching the video for the first time to take the cover off of this TS. You have to take pretty much every screw out except for these key bed screws, just to keep it simple. Don't take those out. You have screws back here. These need to come out. All of these screws through here need to come out. These need to come out. Just like I said, all of them, but these. And to say it again, some of these are coarse thread. Some of them are fine thread. So you want to pay attention to at least the order and pattern that you take these out in. Because I think these, for instance, go into plastic and they're coarse thread. So if you just throw these screws in a container, when you go to put this coarse thread back in where a fine thread should go, you're going to screw it up. <laughs> Thank you.
with these screws out, I just pull back on this lid just so it'll clear these jack lips like that. Only thing is, is it's still hard to get this power thing to clear. Pretty much how you do it, you know, maybe you take this side up first and get it to come up over here. It's not really rocket science. See, now that I did that, it's it'll come right off. Boom. All right, here it is under the hood. Right now, there's just this metal plate here where this jacket go. The hardware is already in place that will bolt this thing in. Yeah. And it'll plug in right there. These little nuts here are a quarter inch. All right, those are loose. I'm trying to let you see. I need my hands, but these nuts have like a little star lock washer on them. You don't want to drop these. Okay, and it looks like these studs are riveted into the chassis and the, the nuts and star washers will come off. And this metal plate should slide off. So this is basically the plate that's on the card. It just doesn't have the cutout. Yeah, like that. Now imagine if this came with SCSI from the factory, they wouldn't have bent this kink in it to tighten it. It would have just laid down here. I'm just guessing. I'm imagining stuff. All right, let me start these nuts back on here. Do not fall if that thing was to fall back oh my god there's like the top display board right there it could go ting, 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 up under that oh no but it didn't and that's all that matters you go ahead and tighten these are the same nuts you just seen me take off it is installed and all i have to do now is plug this in to these pins i turned my hat sideways so i got room man i'm not trying to be like fred durst or something there <laughs> this board isn't supported enough to just be ramming down down on this pen <laughs> it'll give so you might break the board if you're too rough with this so i'm slipping a finger under there and mashing it down yeah i put a piece of tape right here covering up these solder points because as you can see that bottom panel is pretty close to this board you know maybe in half an inch and i also notice that in sonic also put a sticker right here so I don't know if that's the reasoning for that, you know, in case the bottom bumps up into that board. Could just be coincidence. That's exactly where that orange sticker is at. <laughs> okay, gonna put the lid back on it. Don't let this steel cut your fingers. Shut up. <laughs> Cause I can feel where if I slid my hand the slightest, it would slice me like a butcher knife. All right, here comes the ever so entertaining putting the screws back in. Heck yeah. Now let me show you guys something. What do I have here? Oh, this is a SCSI to SD 5.5 mini. <laughs> So this is a SCSI to SD converter, so you can put SD cards in this. One thing I didn't know is these take the micro SD. I thought it took the large SD, like the uh, like the one in my Kurzweil. But yeah, with these 5.5s, you just plug them in. So it's plugged in, turned on power. That shot key diode, if I wouldn't have did that mod, or if I wouldn't have done that mod, <laughs> I wasn't very good in English, guys. Math, brilliant. Science, brilliant. <laughs> so a stock and Sonic, you you gotta run power to this thing so you'll have a power cable if you leave the keyboard on a desk and it never goes anywhere i guess it's not that big of a deal this thing gets put up it goes in a flight case so this would be kind of a pain hooking power up and stuff okay so it's on storage disc sysx disc here's scuzzy and now we got a beacon light here so we got power so all of this stuff is brand new, guys, and you got to flash these things with a USB cable. It basically tells the thing, hey, what sectors of the card is going to be what SCSI ID? You know, it isn't flashed yet, even though it's flashing. It's not flashed. <laughs> if you're watching this video for a SCSI installation, there you go. We're done. But if you're now wanting to know about this SCSI to SD stuff... <laughs> Hey, real quick, one thing I'm going to do that's going to be super cool, I'm going to put a little bit of Velcro in here. And on this, when this thing's in the flight case, it can just stick to its little Velcro in there. Then it comes out of the flight case, plug it in if I want. Or if I don't want to mess with it, just leave it here. 
This thing also has a GoTech USB right here. It's got one of them little short cruiser USBs in it. So I have 64 gig of Insonic library on this anyways. So if I don't want to mess with this, I could just load anything I want off of that. But if I don't feel like waiting, plug this baby in and it'll load fast. We got options here, guys. <laughs> Boom. Hell yeah. Thank you so much for checking my video out, guys. This is it for now, and I will see you next time. Subscribe if you want.